make your own planet, no plugins, and not even a 3D program if you don't want to. Hey, and welcome to Making Space. I know, right? It's been ages. I've done this before in both Element 3D and all. But in both those cases, you create a 3D object that only exists in that effect. You can't easily add rings. I mean, if you've seen my previous tutorials, you know that there are ways to add rings. But now with 3D objects appearing in regular 3D space, it's much easier. One thing we can't do is create an animated texture. Check out these tutorials of mine if you want to see what's currently possible. There's three components to this, so I'm using the chapter thingies. If you want to skip Blender entirely, then there's links in the description where you can download some ready-made spheres. And likewise, if you aren't wanting to make your own planet, then skip chapter two. First things first, we need a 3D sphere. And as mentioned, I'm using Blender, which is a free open source program. With Blender open, I'm gonna drag a box to highlight, then hit delete to remove the cube, light, and camera. And then I'll go to add mesh UV sphere. But before I click off anywhere, I'll open this little floating pop-up and I'll set the segments to 64 and the rings to 64. This is providing more polygons. When we bring this into After Effects, even with the next step, I've still spotted some straight edges. With the sphere selected, you'll see this orange outline. Right click on it and choose Shade Auto Smooth. And there, a perfect sphere. And Blender's pop-ups are a little weird, so if you don't see a change, try tapping Enter and you should get that perfect sphere. Yes, I know the Earth is an oblate spheroid, unless you're a flat earther, in which case it is. Sorry, it just is. Switch to the shading tab. Then in the outliner panel, you see it's not just Adobe that sucks at naming things. Expand the sphere until you see its polygon green thing. Then select the materials property from the panel below and click new. Ugh, nodes. Don't worry, our blender time is almost over. From this add dropdown, choose texture, image texture. And load in an image. I've created a 4000 by 2000 image already, and I'll be using that to make changes in a bit. And then click on the color pin thing and drag the line to base color on the principal BSDF. And then go back to the add dropdown and add a second image texture. This time load in what I've called water specular map. We'll link this to the roughness. We'll get into this in the next chapter, but anything black will be shiny and reflective, anything white will be dull. So we're done with Blender. Just go to File, Export, Wavefront OBJ. What this produces is two files, an OBJ 3D file and an MTL texture file, which we can open in Notepad or any basic text editor. And this line here, that's our texture file, and that one is the specular image. As long as I keep all the files together, I have separate image files I can update without ever needing to go back into Blender. But you may have noticed we didn't add a bump or normal map, so the sphere is smooth. We're going to create a grayscale bump map later. So for now, at the bottom of the text, just type bump, and then the file name, including the extension, and save. In After Effects, go to File, Import, and select the OBJ file. Now we don't get to see the MTL file or the texture files in the project panel, but the OBJ file is referencing them, and this allows us to modify the texture. Like I said earlier, we can't animate that change directly, but at least we can create a texture. So let's do that. I've made a comp 4000 by 2000 pixels, and yes, I could do this in Photoshop or any image editor, or even AI, I suppose, as long as I save the output to match the file name in the MTL file. The composition duration doesn't matter as of May 2025 at least. We'll be taking a single frame. When I made a planet texture in orb, 
I started with a photo of a paving slab in my backyard. So this time I thought I'd do something similar, so I grabbed this cool image off Pexels after searching for limestone texture. With the image in place and nothing selected, I'll just draw two rectangle shapes. And make them both white. And then I'll go to Effect, Stylize, Roughen Edges, and set the border to around 100, and drop the scale to 20. And that creates our ice caps. So I'll hit Enter and rename the layer to Ice Caps. Then with no layer selected, I'll grab the pen tool and start drawing my oceans. And let's drag this layer below the ice caps. and then go to Layer, Layer Styles, Inner Glow. And set the Blend Mode to Normal, and set the Color for the Shallow Coastal Waters. Maybe the size to 100 and the opacity to 40. But as random as I tried to be, the oceans aren't great. So go back to Effects, and this time choose Distort, Turbulent Displace. And crank the amount up to 300 and drop the size to 50. Then I'll go back to the Ice Caps layer, highlight and copy the Rough and Edges effect, and then paste this onto the Oceans layer. That's better. And I'll cheat and make a new shape layer with the same blue and two shapes just to hide the edge glow. Just before we're done with the water, Let's go to Layer, New, Solid, and hit Enter and name it Rivers. And then use the Track Mats option to get its track mat to Oceans and invert it, and turn Oceans back on. Then go to Effect, Generate, Advanced Lightning. Position the origin so we can see it. and then expand the glow settings and drop the glow radius to zero. Then you can select the effect and duplicate it by holding control and tapping D, and then check the box Composite on Original. And do that a few times until you have a patchwork of rivers. And then to sort the colors out, go to Effect, Generate, Fill, and set the color to match your ocean color. Let's add some greenery. Create a new solid, make it comp size and grass green. And name it greenery or grassery. And drag it below the oceans layer and set its transfer mode to hard light. Next, I'll use the pen tool and draw where I want some greenery. And rather than feather each mask, I'll just go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Box Blur. And crank the blur up to about 100. And that's a basic texture map done. To export it, I'm using FX Console, free from Video Copilot. But you can also go to Composition, say Frame As, File. FX console just makes this quicker. To get our specular map, solo the ice caps, ocean and river layers. Then go to layer, new, solid, and create a new comp sized white solid. And place it at the bottom of the comp. Then go to layer, new, adjustment layer. And to this add effect, color correction, hue saturation, and drag the saturation all the way down to zero to create grayscale. Then to darken the water, go to Effect, Color Correction, Levels, and drag the black point along to the spike.
for the bump map and this should work for any texture you might have, not just the ones you've generated. Turn off the levels effect, then go to effect, channel, invert. Unsolo all the layers so we have a negative black and white version of everything and save this frame. And that's the texture maps made. We can now import our planet into After Effects and it will look like this. So the next step is to get it closer to a world with clouds and atmosphere. First bit is dead easy. Just go to File, Import and select your planet.obj file. And you can even check Create Composition if you wish. Oh, déjà vu. So it loads in, looking a little weird as it's got A's default glassy looking environment being reflected. So let's create a sunlight. Now if you check the help files, currently only environment lights can cast shadows with A's advanced 3D renderer. Which made me think I would have to generate an environment map with a light in in order to put half the world in shadow. But cast shadow still works for objects on themselves. All we need to do is go to layer, new light, and make it a parallel light, white, 100% and click OK. But let's also be organized and go to layer, new, null object. Make it 3D and hit enter to rename it to planet null. And parent our planet.obj layer to it. Then back on planet null, hit P to expose the position properties and twirl down the sunlight and transform. And use the point of interest pick whip to link it to the null object's position. And that means we can move the sun, but the light will always point at the planet. And if I rotate the null object on its Y rotation, you can see how the sun's light reflects differently depending on the type of surface it is bouncing off. Pretty neat. Next, we need to add some clouds, but we've since closed down Blender. Oh no, this is such a pain. Rather than go back into that 3D program, in File Explorer, duplicate planet.obj and duplicate planet.mtl, and then rename them to clouds. Then open planet.opj in Notepad. And just like earlier, you can see the entire file written out in text. And right at the top there, third line, that's our MTL file. Just rename that to clouds.mtl and save. Then in clouds.mtl, delete the bottom two lines, map PR and bump, and edit map KD to point to the image of a cloud texture map. This one from Wikipedia looks pretty cool. That's so cool. I know. You're an undiscovered genius. How can we reward you? <laughs> Once saved, import clouds.obj into After Effects and add it to your comp. These weird lines are happening because planet.obj and clouds.obj occupy exactly the same space. But we can avoid that simply by turning the clouds off which is also useful because we have no way of setting a transfer mode for the clouds. Instead, what we can do is go to layer, new, solid, make it a comp size solid, and rename it to clouds. Then go to effect, channel, calculations. Set the second layer to clouds.obj, set its opacity to 100%, and set its blending mode to copy. This gives us a copy of the model, but one that we can add effects to and set the blending mode for. So let's set the layers transfer mode to screen, and maybe let's add a levels correction from color correction. And just bring down the input white a little. In being a separate model, we can add a rotation to the Y axis so that we get some movement. I'll tap R to expose the rotation properties, and I'll just set a couple of keyframes on the model a few seconds apart, then hold Alt and click on the stopwatch for Y rotation, and type loop out brackets quotes continue close quotes close brackets. So the clouds will keep rotating after the keyframes at that same speed. Next, we need an atmosphere. Duplicate the clouds layer and rename it to Atmos because it's easier to spell than troposphere. And solo it. Delete the levels and on the calculation second layer, 
change the RGBA dropdown to alpha. This should give you a pure white circle. Then go to effect, blur and sharpen, fast box blur. And set the radius to five. Then go to effect, generate circle, which will clear out everything else. Set the radius to 650 and expand feather and set that to 150. Check the box for invert circle and set the blending mode dropdown to stencil alpha. Now we can't see anything, but we're about to change that. Hold alt and click on the center stopwatch and type var planet equals and pick with the planet null layer dot two world brackets square brackets zero comma zero comma zero close squares close brackets semicolon. We've created a variable called planet and then taken the null layer's 3D position and converted it to 2D. That's what two world is doing. On a new line, let's do the same for the sunlight. And then create another variable we'll call offset and square brackets. We're creating an array of coordinate points and we're going to subtract each exposition of the planet and sun and then multiply that by a small amount. Then do the same for the offsets Y. This will nudge the circle layer off the center of the null object in the opposite direction to the sun. To do all that, we'll type regular brackets planet square brackets zero close squares, zero is the exposition, minus sun zero, close brackets times 0 0.1 comma. Now we're going to do the same for the y position, brackets planet one, minus sun one, close brackets times 0 0.1, close up the array semicolon. So offset is a tenth of the distance from the planet to the star. So now we'll just add the planet and offset values together for the output. Planet plus offset. And there, we'll get a crescent wherever the planet is. Hey, Editing Cactus here. I do like this expression, but I have found that I disable it about half the time when I'm making planets, and then just manually position the circle to create the crescent. That gives me more control, but it is still a neat expression, so I've left it in the tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts. Okay, back to me. Go to Effect, Generate, Fill, and set the color for the atmosphere. Then go to Effect, Stylize, Glow. Set the radius to 20, but drop the amount to 0 0.2. And with the effect selected, hold down Control and tap D to duplicate it and set the radius to 100, and the intensity back to 1. And unsolo the layer. And depending on the look you're going for, you can adjust the circle's radius and feather. This tutorial has raged completely out of control. I'm up to 21 pages. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to look at adding night side lights, city worlds, lava planets, Oh, I know, a giant stone hand like from that mega hit Marvel's movie, The Eternals.